Welcome back to the Terps of the Beast Coast. If you're tuning in, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, turn the notification notification on whenever you are here. So what we're doing today is the Oklahoma Resin Cup live. I'm hanging out with Steve Potent Ponix. How are you today, man? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much uh, for being our live judge today. So, you know, just um, overall, which was your favorite number? I think five for sure, but I'm more partial to those humulene and more earthy terps. It's kind of an earthy, gassy, and uh, it's just kind of more what my personal preference is. I think uh, some of the other ones have, were, were very dominant in lemonine, which is uh, is okay, and a lot of people, people like it, but it's not my favorite cup of tea, so I think it's just a little bit of a personal preference, but... Yeah, nice. definitely five. I think had the the most complexity to it, and the most uh, more of a variety, more of a balance of terpenes rather than more of a over dominance of one. Nice man. So, with that said, um, let's talk about you know just a little bit about you first before we jump into these entries here. So, um, why um, the name uh, uh, Potent Ponics? Sure. So um, I wanted to uh, come up with a name that would kind of relate to both vegetables and cannabis, but also kind of apply to um, not just aquaponics, but also, you know, terrestrial soil growing or or other types of methods as well, not be kind of uh, pigeonholed into one type of uh, method, which is, you know, more or less what what I like to do. I work both in living soil projects as well as aquaponic projects. And, uh, you know, I feel like it fits, uh, uh, you know, all of those realms together. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being a stewardess of the earth. I'm always champion people who encourage more of a living type of soil because, you know, there is an exploration with the earth right now if we don't start getting people back into living soil. So with that said, um, let's talk about the entries today. Um, If you want to run through your thoughts, you know, one through five, as far as, you know, you know, what was the drawback you think on some of these? And, you know, what were you thought were some of the great things that were on it? So, um, yeah, so number one, um, it looks interesting, but... Um, yeah, number one was, was okay. I felt like it was very dominant in lemonine and had um, maybe two or three other terpenes that were kind of easy to detect and, and uh, on the flavor side and just didn't have a lot of uh, as much depth to it as, as some of the others. Um, I also felt like it didn't quite have the same body as some of the other ones as well in terms of fullness. Um, certainly not compared to four and five that had, you know, per, a pretty uh, pretty large amounts of fullness compared in comparison. Yeah, number two, sure. which I think is the most um, premious of them all. Oh, yeah. Um, this one definitely was pretty smooth, but again... Very, very, very lemonine dominant, which uh, I, um, you know it isn't my my favorite terp. Uh, uh, I feel like it's kind of almost like the kind of how Mercine was maybe four or five years ago. Now everything's kind of lemonine dominant, uh, or a lot of it is in, in Oklahoma. And it also makes sense too because a lot of those uh, lemonine dominant ones tend to do a little bit better in mm. the climate out here. So you know it is kind of uh, partially that as well. Um, uh, and, uh, number three was was pretty good. Number three was probably my my second choice uh, and it did have a lot of lemonine but it also had a lot of other fruitier terps to it uh, and uh, I felt like um, it kind of uh, had a really really good mouthfeel and a really really good complexity to the, the taste uh, but again still kind of almost over there was a little bit too much lemonine for my personal preference but again that's just my personal cup of tea mm, and number four number four was nice and greasy I kind of like stuff like this um this is probably my third choice uh, out of the out of the five, um, and again, really, really full body, um, long, long mouthfeel. That greasy, greasier uh, uh, rosins definitely have a lot more of a lasting mouthfeel to them uh, a lot of times. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, again, uh, uh, a really big fan of that. But I also feel like this one you'd have to store in the fridge or freezer, and if you didn't, it's definitely going to change on you pretty quickly over time if you don't store it properly. Um, and then five, uh, I really, really like this one. Again, radically different terpene profile uh, and chemovar profile from the other ones, and just one that it's much more in line with what my personal preferences are. So. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, 
With that said, you know, let's talk about rosin. Um, my great debate right now is, uh, you know, bubble hash versus rosin. Um, what's your thought on that? Uh, I really like dry sift or bubble hash. I think both of them are good. I think dry sift kind of has some also slightly different profiles, I've noticed, uh, compared to the bubble hash. I know that sounds crazy, but it, it, you can taste a little bit of a difference if you do a side-by-side. So, um, uh, you know, dry sift would probably always be my, my preferred, but um, that's not always uh, easy to do uh, uh, in terms of labor and time and production. So uh, bubble, especially at scale, makes a hell of a lot more sense. So, with that said, you know, um, just so we can clarify, when we're doing, when we're talking about dry sift, are we talking through the screen process? Yeah, the screen process or with tumblers, uh, depending on which method you, you know, and what scale. Um, They make a lot of these commercial tumblers now that are kind of like a square box shape and it just kind of tumbles the the cannabis with uh, sieves on the outside of it so it screens everything so you're just getting those trichome heads. Excellent, excellent. And then, you know, as far as when we're talking about um, bubble hash, what's your favorite micron bag when it comes to collecting? Do you ever wash personally? Oh, yeah. In fact, when I'm trying to analyze, especially if I'm pheno hunting and I have it down to maybe three or four moms or five moms and I want to limit, I want to get down to maybe three or, you know, try to, to cut it, the number down a little bit, I'll take a couple of those different plants. As, or if I'm trying to determine exactly when I need to harvest a plant that I really like, um, I'll, I'll take uh, some some heads and I'll wash them, I'll freeze them and wash them, and then I can break down that those trichome ripeness uh, phases. You know, if I get an eight-bag set or a five-bag set, I got, you know, the small ones, me medium, large, and all, all and so, on, so on and so forth, and I can kind of figure out exactly where that, that sweet spot's going to be in terms of what I'm after in that cultivar, uh, terpene profile-wise, and when it's kind of passed, or if it's, you know, how long it is to actually get to that larger trichome head size, you know, because you don't want to wash too early, um, because then you're using losing a ton of yield, so if you're trying to figure out exactly when those trichome sizes are coming into ripeness, that certainly can be a really, really good tool, uh, especially working with new genetics. Nice. But I also I also take them and squash them too because you can kind of really get uh, all the different flavor slices out of the, the the cannabis as well because you have all those different tri- uh, you know ripenesses of trichomes and the different types of trichomes that make up those different sized heads. So you know you really can kind of analyze the overall flavor profile of a particular cultivar a little bit better when you do that. So just to, just so we can um, clarify and I appreciate the information that you provided. Sure. Which one is it is your favorite? Oh, is it going to be the 90, the 120, the 150? Which where where do you fall? Usually the 73, you know, cuz the 73 you can, you know, get quite a few uh, things although, you know, that you get out of the 90, but the 73 is usually my favorite. Nice, man. You know, as far as that goes, getting back to the entries itself, which one you think had the most um effect when you when you when you had um, got into it which one you think gave you just like you just felt it right away five. Yeah. Five. why 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 you think you felt the sort of five uh, again it's just a human more humulene and gassy kind of strain and that's really what my my body prefers in terms of uh, what i find uh, a positive experience from chemically mm. nice and then was there anything that kind of turned you off um two was pretty harsh um uh, compared to the others i felt like again just being very very lemonine dominant Mm -hmm. was it just can be kind of harsh just in and of itself okay so as far as um you know you being a uh a water separator or you know getting into the hash making how long have you been doing it for if you don't mind me asking sure so um i've been doing uh, bubble hash since maybe 2012 or 2013 um, back when we started to have a, a, you know a lot of stuff just laying around from from growing out in Colorado um, and then just wanted to find a way to, to work with more of the lowers and some of the the trim and stuff like that this is a way to quickly you know kind of go through it and get you know better value out of it or at least better kind of quality product out of that you know kind of lesser grade kind of products um, so that was kind of how I got started with it and then uh, Ended up actually taking one of Frenchie's courses out in San Francisco, so that was in Oakland. So that was really a, a wonderful experience and kind of learning the uh, from the best out there in terms of doing uh, uh, bubble hash extraction and all that. So that was a, a wonderful and uh, uh, and very cherished uh, experience that I had. Nice. Okay.
R.I.P. Frenchie, we love you and we miss you, man. So, let's get into um, a couple of determination questions I like to ask everyone. Sure. Um, when it comes to your top three flowers mm-hmm. currently, which one is it? Uh, in terms of stuff I'm growing or, or stuff smoke. I like to smoke? Okay. Um, so, I have uh, Alien All Jacked Up, which I got from Mr. Green mm. uh, out in Cali. Uh, great, great dude. I got a really good genetics from him. That stuff is fire. Um, and then um, uh, what else um, a G13 hash plant a really good G13 hash plant uh, that's uh, really amazing and then the other one right now would be this um, uh, Durban Ethiopian cross that we have that grows really really well and it's a really really well outdoor but it gets it chunks up and it just has this like very unique more floral lots of osamine um, uh, lots of more like lighter floral terps to it and oh, it does yeah. really well with the climate and the heat out here so um, it's one of my favorites so that would probably be my top three right now that's because we have uh, I have a lot of those at home beautiful I love I love a Durban it's one of my secret loves of cannabis <laughs> yeah, um, Durban Swazis or Jamaican stuff grows really well in Oklahoma because it's a similar it's pretty hot you know it has a, a you know fluctuations in humidity the same way we do in oklahoma so they, they all do very very well out here and outdoor if you're trying to grow larger plants that are a little more mold and, and insect resistant nice thank you for that so the next thing we want to jump in is another question is when it comes to um concentrate it's probably going to be an easy one <laughs> is it going to be solvent or solventless uh, so usually rosin, and then uh, uh, I do like uh, some of the more advanced um, uh, extraction methods that are coming out now on the market soon. Um, there's there's all different types of people working with different solvents now that are, are uh, not you know alcohol or, or you know, pro- um, propane or, or butane or any of those. So some of those ones are pretty unique, and, and it can have some different um, terpene profiles that you don't really get from rosin either. Uh, also, I don't know if you've had any of the cold rosin. Some of that is really, really, really yummy too. So um, that would be another one that I would definitely want to, um, you know, uh, would be on my list. Uh, I'm also really interested in seeing how people taking rosin and sealing it up the way that they used to do with like old school hash, mm. uh, like really, really nice rosin that's kind of picked at its peak and nice and golden, uh, and then aging it in a, in a nitrogen flushed uh, thing so you have no oxygen to kind of break things down the same way that you would in a sealed hash container. So I really think that would be kind of an interesting kind of thing in terms of really high quality hash, having kind of vintages or aged um, you know, low oxygen environment hashes and rosins, I think is going to be, uh, you know, kind of more on the upper end of stuff to come. Yeah. So, I mean, with that said, you know, that's very insightful as far as one way of preserving it. But there is also another technique that, you know, with degradation creates something different in regards yep. to the terpene profile. So we would lose that, that, that aging process per se that really draw the love of hash. But with the new tech, I mean, who's to say it might not also give you something else different? Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of those too, you're still going to have a lot of that degradation through time and 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 some of those different things breaking down. It's just going to not get oxidized. So a lot of the old school hashes, once it gets that skin on the outside, mm-hmm. that's and, and it's tightly wrapped. That's that's a no oxygen environment exactly. as well. So right, right. Yeah. So, you know, with the other question we want to get into, when it comes to growing cannabis, do you prefer organic or salt? Uh, Well, so I prefer to do um, really microbial heavy, like KNF style uh, or hybridization of aquaponics and KNF in living soil or living soil uh, with KNF, uh, uh, some modified KNF inputs. Um, And then sometimes you do have to add a little bit of mineral salts in an organic form or a a natural based form to balance the soil. You know, sometimes your soil just is way, way off from where you are uh, and you have to find ways to do that. You can do it with plants. We're working on a lot of plant fermentation formulas and stuff like that. Add a lot of compost. You can really bring back a lot of it, but sometimes Sometimes you can't bring back everything, especially when it comes to manganese, molybdenum, and some of those more micronutrients and trace elements that really are critical um, for, for getting, you know, uh, sales appeal. If you want your purples to really pop and things like that, you really have to have some of those present. And you can get them in an Omri organic certified form in a mineral salt, you know, that's just an, you know, a mined mineral salt that's hype, you know, it dissolves in water and, and works just fine, or it's precipitated out and it counts as an organic mineral. Um, and that can really, really help, again, boost your sales appeal because, again, purple anything really sells well in the cannabis market. And, uh, um, you know, 
<laughs> so I'm gonna I'm just gonna horn it in just a little bit closer to if you're doing your own personal grow, is it gonna be salt grown or organically grown? Oh, I would do aquaponics and then just do all my own for plant ferments for inputs. <laughs> so we'll say more on the organic side uh, without using, um, as you mentioned prior before, because what what uh, what we appeal for here on the general Alvarez is always going to be for the home grower for them to sure. you know do what they need to do because you know as you say when you're on the more commercial size there is a sacrifice to some of the plant that. I think it's lost due to, you know, any kind of created kind of situation. So mm-hmm. if you're not going to get the true plant when you push it beyond its bounds, like you mentioned, for that eye appeal sometimes it's great, but I think sometimes there's some of the effects that's lost to that. But yeah. that's just my personal opinion. That's why I'm a champion for a home girl because at least they get to, you know, create something natural and it's more balanced versus something that is just what what the plan is right yeah just itself so talking about these entries um which which one would you think is like the most just like besides number five which one was number two to you probably three why is that um it just had the 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 next widest variety variety of terpenes that were in a higher percentage that you could taste and feel the experience of and and um, it, it, it had um, the, the most uh, amount of, again, most complexity after it, I think, overall. Mm. Can you remember what was the flavor you were thinking when you were um, running through number three or what? Yeah, it was like flavors? lemon and fruity. Lemon and fruit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty good. And the five had more, like you said, earthy tones? Yeah, earthy and gassy, which is, again, is more, more of my favorite. And it was very much in contrast to all the others, I feel like. All of you know, even one, one through four still had a, a pretty decent lemony in dominance, uh, or you know, higher lemony in percentage. Five has very low lemony, mm. so it very was much of a contrast uh, to the others. Nice. Man, Steve, you've been great, man. I appreciate your thoughts on these entries. Um, you know, if people wanted to connect with you, what's your social media link? Sure, you can find me on Instagram, Potent Ponics. Uh, you can find me on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes. Um, we host the Growing With Fishes podcast every Thursday live on YouTube, and then I also re-upload that in audio format as well after the fact. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, uh, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, we're going to definitely get you back on, you know, and, and do a, a YouTube version of this. Um, you know, it's interesting um, how you broke this down, and I appreciate your thoughts, especially on all the t- things that you um, harped on. Is you know, it's really good because you know I like a good challenge, but at the end of the day, I also understand what the market is. You know, it is it is a ROI, and at the end of the day, it is a business. But yep. as I said, for the home growers, they also have options that they can utilize, and yep. we you are very knowledgeable in that information where we can disseminate it so they can understand how they can formulate it on a smaller scale per se, right? Oh yeah, they uh, we have a whole pesticide uh, or organic pesticide guide. We have about 40, 26 videos. We're going to add a whole bunch more this year nice. on uh, all beneficial insects you can use, beneficial microbes you can use, stuff that you can use at the home scale as well right. that's going to be safe for your children, your cats, your dogs, and all the other creatures in the house. And that's the information we need to champion at the end of the there because you know what works for the large scale can't work for the small scale in yep. a sense right yep yeah so anything else before we let you go um no uh, if people want to check it out and they want to learn more about aquaponic cannabis they can check out my, my podcast we also have just lots of other general uh, uh, cannabis knowledge from uh, living soil to we just had Tommy Chong on last Thursday and lots of cannabis culture people as well um, we also host the virtual aquaponic cannabis conference on there so we have lots of cool um, organic aquatic mineralization um, uh, type um, uh, talks on there and uh, uh, it's a really a, a great um, uh, format and a really wonderful event that we have uh, people from all over the world. We have people from Australia and uh, Africa and Switzerland and England, and it really was a cool um, and interesting uh, uh, kind of place. So. Excellent, man. Steve Poponics, thank you again for coming on to the Terps of the Beast Coast, Terpco Nation. I hope you enjoyed 
the live here from um, Oklahoma in regards to Resin Cup. Don't forget to tune in next Sunday. We'll be in Michigan doing the same thing again.